Hey everyone, Mif here, and in this tutorial video I'd like to go over some basics regarding installing mods. I know some people I've received comments from and some others who would like to get into modding but perhaps don't exactly know where to start or how to go about it, or maybe felt a little bit overwhelmed after trying to check it out themselves. If you are in a similar situation, I invite you to stay a while and listen, <laughs> and hopefully after watching this video you will all see that installing mods is a pretty simple affair once you know what's what. Just for clarification, in this video I'm not going to talk about the so-called mega mods, which are compilations that install a lot of mods at once, sometimes creating one big game out of all of the Baldur's Gate titles and even add the first Icewind Dale into the mix sometimes. Those are more advanced installations and come with their own tutorials. Here I'm going to talk about the usual affair of installing a mod or a couple of them one by one on your own. All right. First off, let's talk about the three most prominent versions of uh, Baldur's Gate games we have nowadays. We have the original classics, of course, still great games to play. We then have the Enhanced Edition version 1.3, which is the last patch before Siege of Dragonspear and the changes it brought. And lastly, we have the current versions of Enhanced Editions after the release of Siege of Dragonspear. So versions 2.0 and later ones. At the time of this recording, the latest is 2.4, with 2.5 being in the works. I'm talking about those because before we install any mods we have to make sure they're going to work on the Baldur's Gate version we're planning to play. Now, 99% of mods are going to work on both the originals and Enhanced Edition version 1.3. There are some exceptions, like the very few mods that were never updated for Enhanced Editions that will only work on the classics, and there probably are some mods with changes or content specifically for the Enhanced Editions, but generally almost any mod should work on those two. The problem begins with the post-Siege of Dragonspear versions of Enhanced Editions, and that's really why I'm even talking about this whole thing. The 2.0 and later patches changed the file structure of Baldur's Gate a bit, and that broke a lot of mods. In this situation, at this time, some mods got updated already and work on those versions, while others require certain workarounds to run, and finally some mods are just not available. Generally, installing mods on this version is a bit more of a hassle and requires additional steps. When it comes to 2.0 and later versions, a good resource to check out the situation is a thread on the Beamdog forums entitled BGEE 2.0 and Siege of Dragonspear Compatible Mods. Uh, by the way, I'm going to show a couple of sites in this video and all of the links are going to be posted in the video's description, so feel free to check them out there. So in this thread at the very beginning of it, they say it plain and square. Uh, <laughs> that basically the sentence in other words means that version 2.0 broke mods and there are certain steps we have to take in order to have some in our game if we're running that version. First of all, if we're running a version coming from GOG or Steam, we need to install a utility tool called Mod Merge, which is going to allow the mod installers to access the Siege of Dragonspear data on Steam and GOG versions that comes in zipped. So that's the first step. And then the second, uh, when it comes to a very popular mod, SCS, it was never updated for 2.0, but there is a certain fix. Um, that's an example of that workaround I mentioned. There's a fix. If you click here on the fix word, it's going to bring you to a post explaining what you need to do and what you need to download. And once you install that fix, uh, you will be able to install SCS and play it on versions 2.0 and later ones. And then finally, we have a list of mods that were updated and are going to work without any additional pain involved. <laughs> and um, this is not a huge list, but it generally has all of the most important, most popular mods like the BG1 NPC project, the unfinished business, um, the BG2 tweaks, which is now known as tweaks anthology, and some other pretty popular mods. So the situation is not that bad. Uh, so now that we know all we need to know about the versions, we have to get ourselves some mods. There's a couple of big sites like Gibberlings 3 or Spellhold Studios. Uh, that have a lot of them in their offer and provide nice descriptions and forums with different threads, opinions, and reviews. You can open here the categories, for example, we have the Spellhold Studios forums, and uh, on the Gibberlings 3 site we also can access the forums here and access a lot of information about uh, many different mods. There are also some smaller sites, but uh, these two are, are generally the biggest ones and provide you with a huge supply of different mods. There are also threads on the uh, Beamdog forums that are useful for that purpose. Here, for example, we have a BGE, a BGEE mods um, list that's for 
was a pretty pretty big list with uh, links and everything uh, showcasing what mods are definitely compatible. Uh, here's a list for Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition. Uh, also with a uh, recommended installation order, which we're going to talk about in a second, and I'm going to provide you or recommend a slightly different one. Uh, anyway, here the mods are grouped into different categories, and uh, we can access them here with links and everything. There's also just general forums on Beamdog, on the Beamdog site, with uh, many threads from mod creators looking for feedback and, you know, developing mods and stuff, and different discussions about uh, different mods and, you know, their good and bad things, reviews and stuff like that. Uh, so there's a wealth of information to access if you want to delve into it. So once we decide on what mods we'd like to install, it's time to download them into our Baldur's Gate folder and, if needed, extract them there using a program like WinRAR or 7-Zip. And for the purposes of demonstration in the video, let's check out the Tweaks Anthology mod and install a component from it. Uh, most mods... Actually, here's the, the title site, the title page. Uh, most mods uh, generally come with a nice readme file, like this one here in which we'll find info about what versions of the game the mod will run on and more detailed descriptions of the components available for installation. Generally, everything you need to know about the mod. And if we want to install it, we can go to Download Now, go to Tweaks Anthology, and uh, choose our operating system. Uh, and uh, I already have this file prepared. This one is not a uh, packaged file that we would need to extract. This is just an installer file ready to use. I'm using the uh, Enhanced Edition 1.3 from Steam, and in this, this is my Baldur's Gate folder. We can just run the executable here and uh, allow the mod. Well, we specify where our uh, Baldur's Gate uh, folder is, and we allow the mod to actually install the necessary files. So this is going to take a second, and um, we're going to be presented with a um, a certain uh, Waydo kind of installer. This is this is the installer you will see from most mods, because the the great thing about BG mods is that the vast majority of them nowadays come in this this here Waydo format. And that provides the nice installation process here, and it's also going to detect what other mods we have installed to minimize conflicts between them as much as possible. Also, you can use the setup file later to uninstall or reinstall components from mods. It has to be mentioned that the mods are going to detect what version of Baldur's Gate we're running and are only going to offer us the components available for our game. So for instance, if you're running the Enhanced Editions, some Tweak mods, like Tweak Anthology here, are not going to offer us components that the Enhanced Editions have already included in them, such as some bug fixes and certain minor changes. So here, just going through the installation process, we can choose English. Here we're going to run the game also in English, which is number 2. And uh, here we can also display the README, which uh, we already have kind of prepared here. And uh, actually, this is going to provide, of course, the detailed info. Here we just have a list. And let's say that we just want to install this component to remove helmet animations. So this is under the cosmetic changes. And if we go back to the installation, we don't want to see the README. We have it already prepared. So we would like the installer to display us the components from cosmetic changes, because that's where the component that interests us is located. So we can choose yes, and we can choose no for all of the other uh, different categories. So here we have the, uh, the component that we want to install. We can just select I for install and press enter going to install. As you can see, it already skipped uh, some uh, changes that are not available for our version of, uh, you know, Enhanced Edition 1.3. And because uh, Enhanced Editions already uh, use, like, different avatars. So now we have different uh, options, like, you know, the cosmetic changes to, like, uh, different avatars, different skin colors for NPCs, animation tweaks. We can actually put the Icewind Dale casting graphics, for example, in our Baldur's Gate game. Uh, the portrait icons that come from equipped uh, items. We can change a lot of different things. We can just choose no for each component or just choose Q to quit already. But I just want to show you how the installer is going to quit on its own once it runs out of components to offer us. 
so we can actually uh, let's just fix Boo's squeak <laughs> so that it actually is an animal sound and not a person saying squeak uh, being sped up and then we just go for no also I wanted to go with the installation to to show you this that sometimes instead of just selecting being able to select I for install or N for not install uh, the components sometimes come in a couple of different versions and we can choose uh, one of them or uh, decline <laughs> as uh, was the case in uh, most of the offers here uh, most of the components so we're just going to continue to refuse whatever the mod uh, offers us and then we can see the uh, confirmation of what we have successfully installed which components so remove helmet animations and uh, we fixed boo's squeak and we can press enter to exit and then we're done our mod is installed and uh, once we run the game we're going to be able to see the effects of uh, all that so anyway the last thing i'd like to cover is that recommended order to install multiple mods in so here and there was a uh, a recommendation like this i will recommend a slightly different one generally with the way do format that the mods come in uh, it generally shouldn't be a problem in a lot of situations but uh, different mods modify different files of the game and it's just a good habit to develop uh, to install these mods in a certain uh, order there are a couple of rules of thumb to follow in this regard basically starting with mods that create new files and bring new content and ending with mods that just modify the existing content to a large extent and uh, creatures rules and mechanics so following that theory as a general rule in most cases when talking about the most popular mods and I will provide some examples here we're going to want to start out with uh, Ascension first if we're playing Baldur's Gate 2 with Throne of Ball of course and then uh, applying fix packs like the BG2 fix pack if we need them and they are not required for the enhanced editions that already come with those fixes and next we're going to want to install some story mods with quests and content and new adventures that type of stuff after those, we should install item mods, stores, and new merchants. Uh, next on the list are going to be new NPC mods, followed by banter mods. And then we have kit mods, providing us with new kits, new classes, or you know modifications of existing ones. And then we have mods with rules and mechanics changes of various types. And after that, we will have the usual two or three end mods that are going to conclude most installations. Uh, first, BG2 Tweaks, or Tweaks Anthology, as it is known by now. And um, then uh, SCS, that uh, is going to be the last mod uh, in a lot of installations. And then optionally, and finally, the mod A Tweaks, a semi-popular mod, uh, if you want to use it. That's kind of the exception uh, to the rule that SCS goes last. And that basically brings me to my last point, that... Um, and those are the general rules, but there are two problems with those. First, there are a lot of mods that consist of more than just one category of what they change. For instance, a lot of new NPC mods also include some new adventures and quests, and perhaps a new kit that the NPC uses, and what then? When to install that? The second problem is that there are exceptions to those rules. For example, generally we want SCS to install last, but as you could see from the general rules I outlined a second ago, uh, the mod A Tweaks actually comes after SCS because it makes use and cooperates with some of the SCS features and changes. So my last piece of advice is to recommend an ultimate resource for this type of thing. A, uh, a detailed list of most known mods from the creators of the Big World Project Mega Mod. And using this, you can quickly check the spots of mods you're planning to run on the list in your playthrough and check in what order they should be installed. I found this list to be a really solid resource that takes into account all of the different exceptions and what exactly mods modify and provides an optimal installation order that worked every time for me so far in my bigger installs. So here's the link for it. We can download the PDF file. I already have it opened here. And uh, do not get worried about the big, <laughs> um, you know, the large amount of pages here. Um, because all we need to do really is to look at the list of contents because the mods here are listed in uh, the order that the mega mod is going to install them in or, or recommends the installation in and um, let's just say that we want to play Baldur's Gate 2 and we want to install three mods we want to install SCS we want to install A tweaks 
and we want to install, let's say, a quest mod like Back to Brinlaw. A pretty good mod, by the way. So here we can just scroll down past the BG1 section, and as you can see, they all come um, listed in categories that line up with the general rules that we talked about a second ago. Anyway, here's uh, Baldur's Gate 2 with their story mods, and uh, here, from the three mods we wanted, Back to Brynlaw is going to be here. He's, it's going to be the first out of the three that we want to install. Then, and then the other ones we wanted were SCS and A, A tweaks, and if we scroll way past this, I think on like page 10 or 11, near the end, uh, there's going to be uh, Sword Coast Stratagems, and after that, A tweaks. So that is our installation order. First, back to Brynlaw, second, Sword Coast Stratagems, and third, A tweaks. And we're done. That's all we needed to, to get from this file. It just provides like a really nice list where with all of these different mods visible here and you can just kind of uh, using your the general rules we talked about and using this you can figure out the best way to order uh, the best order in which to install the, the mods you're interested in. And of course if you click here on any of the mods you can get some more detailed information about installation and whatnot, but it generally pertains to this mega mod, so it might not be useful for uh, just, you know, installing SCS, for example. You should first look into the SCS readme if you want to know something about installing SCS, but just showcasing that, you know, this is a big file and um, there is a wealth of info here available at your disposal, I guess, if you want to delve deeper into it. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video helps at least some of you get into modding Baldur's Gate and experiencing all of those excellent additions to enjoy the BG games even more. I'd also like to take a moment to give credit and thanks to all of the mod creators out there for their amazing works. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll try to respond to every one of them as best I can. And have fun modding Baldur's Gate and I'll see you next time.